Welcome to Lab 1 of Physics 2211, Constant Velocity. Here's the table of contents, which includes the introduction, tracker analysis, computational modeling, results, and discussion. There are some key physics concepts. Newton's first law, which states that an object continues its present state of motion unless acted upon by net force, explains how objects continue to move even, even without a net force on the object. As a result, Constant velocity is defined as an object that has no net force acting on it and has a constant rate of position change over time. There are two formulas essential to this lab. The velocity update formula, or Newton's second law, describes the change in the velocity of an object when a constant net force acts on the object over a change in time. Because this lab focuses on a constant velocity, the net force is expected to be zero. The second formula is the position update formula, which updates the position of an object based on the object's average velocity and the change in time. Because the velocity is constant, the average velocity will equal the initial velocity. The goals of this experiment are to observe the motion of a baseball at constant velocity and to compare this motion to a computer model of constant velocity. Key assumptions include ignoring the force due to air re resistance and the force due to friction while also ignoring any position changes in other axes other than the x direction. This free body diagram shows the expected forces acting on the baseball, with the previously mentioned assumptions taken into consideration. An initial force was applied to the ball to allow the ball to move from rest. At constant velocity, there should be no net forces acting on the baseball, so the ball will move in its current motion and velocity. The system is the baseball and everything else is the surroundings. Here is a tracker analysis of the baseball motion, which measures the position of the baseball as a function of time. The baseball moves from left to right, so the x-axis chosen to measure the position is in the positive direction, with the origin located at the center of the baseball at zero seconds. All positions are positive, and a positive slope of, of position versus time was obtained. Here are some data from the tracker analysis. Importantly, each frame is 1 60th of a second, the change in time is 0.6 seconds, and the velocity of the object is roughly 0.956 meters per second in the positive x direction. The important initial conditions for the computational model coded in vPython include the change in time, the initial position of the ball, and the initial velocity of the ball. These initial conditions were obtained from the tracker data and are shown in the previous slide on tracker data analysis. The formulas presented earlier, the velocity update formula and the position update formula, must also be converted to code, as shown here below the original formulas. The motion of the baseball is computed through iterations with the change in time of 1 of a second, which is done computationally with a while loop that goes until 0.6 seconds. The net force is zero in all directions to allow for constant velocity to occur. The velocity update formula and the position update formula are located here and here. Here are the results from GlowScript. Here's the graphical comparison of position versus time for the observed motion of the baseball and the predicted motion of the baseball. The x-axis is time in seconds and the y-axis is the position from the origin in meters. Initially, the velocity of observed motion and predicted motion of the baseball shown on the position versus time graph as the slope are similar, as expected for a position versus time model based on a net force of zero applied to the object. However, the magnitude of the velocity of the observed motion decreases relative to the computational model at the end of the measured change in time. This decrease suggests that there is some net force acting on the baseball against the direction of motion of the baseball. Possible errors in the experiment include slight differences in measuring the center of the baseball and tracker and the non-consideration of movement in other directions, which would distort the perceived change in position and impact the calculated velocity. Rounding errors in calculations are also considered. If the axes were flipped so that the negative x-axis now is on the right side of the tracker axis, the data shown in the graphical comparison slide would be reflected across the x-axis, with the data showing a negative slope of position versus time. As a result, the direction of the positions and velocity of the object would also be flipped in the negative x-direction. However, the magnitude of the position and velocity of the baseball would stay the same, so the trends would still persist. It is not possible for us to say what or how many forces are responsible for a zero net force in the observed motion of the baseball. While the normal force and the force due to gravity cancel each other out, it is more difficult to consider other forces. 
We know that the force due to friction and air resistance act against the motion of the baseball, but we do not know the forces that allow the baseball to continue rolling at a relatively constant velocity to counter friction and air resistance. Furthermore, the decrease in velocity near the end of the change in time suggests that the net force on the baseball may not be zero, but instead against the motion of the ball. Thank you, and have a good day.